Okay, students, welcome again to Darasa Online lesson. And today we are going to study physics. And uh, the physics, the topic of today is the atomic physics. And uh, the subtopic takes us to the laser, where we'll be looking at the description of production, properties, types, and uses of laser. I'm Cyprian Imgina, a physics teacher. Okay, for today, as we have already looked at the subtopic we are just going to discuss is laser, we will need just to look the introduction, the introduction of laser. So, the introduction of laser really takes us very long way back to 1917 whereby to 1917 whereby we just found that Mr. Albert Einstein had proposed or was able to say that uh, was able to say that the normal light could just be amplified by having being stimulated uh, we know that there are some electrons jumping from the ground state to some an excited state, whenever they are coming back to, to, a, to some lower energy level, they just be able to release some photons. Now, whenever such, such excitation of atoms is really accelerated, then it, we could have the normal light be amplified to what we call stimulated emission. The same idea was developed by Mr. Gordon Gold in, 19, in 1959. In 1959, who also uh, uh, came to agree with Mr. Ab Albert Einstein about the same theory of stimulated emission. And uh, we just found that uh, just one year after that, they, are, uh, they managed to develop what we call an optical resonator, a device which could just be able to produce a, a laser. A laser. So we could just be able to find that after that uh, they managed to reproduce to, to make a device called a, a optical resonator. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and this really was done in 1960, whereby we could be able to find that Mr. Mr. Theodore Maiman was the first person uh, to develop such kind of a device which could be able to produce a laser. Now, this laser is an amplified light, and we could be able to see that the abbreviation of laser is what we call the light amplification of a stimulated emission of radiation. Uh, light amplification of a stimulated emission of radiation. The, 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 radi the radiation which is really produced in that way is really stimulated, and so it becomes very strong, very energetic, and for that particular case, you could just be able to find that this laser have got so many applications in our today's science and technology, whereby you could be able to find that it can be used in various areas, ranging from the, from the medical areas, as well as from the military, for communication, uh, for communication even for the industry, in industry, uh, some industries, we could be able to find that the lasers can also be used into some normal, uh, for some normal optical, optical devices. There are so many areas where we could be able to find that this laser ha are just being used. And for that particular case, it really simplifies, uh, the, it really simplifies, or it takes, our, or it moves our, our today's technology to a very big level uh, through the utilization of laser. We could be able to see even some satellites, they could just be able to communicate uh, with each other by using the laser, as well as in the military. Uh, and we shall be able to see this laser whenever we are, we'll be looking onto an application of the lasers. So first of all, we really need to see how these lasers are being produced. So let us just look the way lasers are being produced. So production of laser, as what we have already mentioned previously, this comes whenever we, are, whenever we are having some stimulation uh, of emission of radiation. 
So that particular stimulated emission of radiation comes in this way. Whenever we are talking about the configuration of an atom, that's where it originates. We are going to have some really various energy level. Let me just take these few energy level. Let me take this to be the first energy level and this to be the second energy level and this to be the third energy level. Let me take E1 to be just like a ground state. A ground state. So the other states there will be the excited state. So let me take this to be the excited excited state. And the second one is an excited state, but I can be able to call this to be the metastable. The metastable state. Then, then it comes like this. Whenever electrons receives, whenever electrons receives some an energy, so it will just be able to move from where it, it had been, it had been there, it will be able to move to a ground to an excited state. So let me assume that an electron jumps from this particular state to an excited state, E3. And uh, it will just be able to stay there for a very short time of about 10 power negative 8 seconds. Normally, it will be able to stay there for just a very short time. And uh, uh, while staying there, some other, uh, some, sometimes it might be able to, it might be able to, uh, to lose the energy and come back to some other lower energy levels. So if it goes back, let's say, to a metastable state level, it means that it will be able to produce a particular energy. It will be able to lose an energy in, in, in form of a photon. And uh, the, that particular electron is staying at the metast metastable state. Really, it stays there for just a uh, for just a, a bit longer time than at the excited state, to about 10 power negative 3 seconds. So we'll just about find that there will be a photon which will just be emitted just like that one. Now, this particular process, we are taking this happens just for a single electron. But sometimes if such kind of excitation or the excitation uh, process happens, then you can be able to see that if we are if we are having let's say one electron moving to an excited state, whenever it comes back to a metastable state, it might be able to produce uh, some two photons. So it might be able to produce some two photons. So the two photons can just be produced, and uh, those particular electrons, if again they move to some another uh, lower energy level, these two two photons will be able to stimulate and release some, some more two photons, so a total of four photons. So we can be able to see that uh, having two photons for the first stage will be having four photons for the next stage, and uh, these four photons for the next stage, will, whenever are being, are being moving to another, to another stable, to, an, to, to, another sta to another state, they, will, they are just going to release eight photons. So eight photons will be able to release 16 photons. 16 photons will be able to release 32 photons to 64 photons to 128 photons. So we'll be able to see that such kind of an excitation process really will make photo many more, many more photons to be produced within the same, within the same container or within the same device, just like just like an optical resonator, which had been developed by Mr. Uh, by, 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 by Mr. Theodore uh, Maiman. And uh, that particular photons of which they are now, they are now existing together, whenever they are, allowed, they are allowed to move out of that particular, uh, of that particular device, you will be able to find that they will be having, they will be very, they will be very, very, very strong. Very, very strong, very, very energetic, and uh, you can just be able to find that uh, even the, uh, even the uh, attenuation is really very small. Attenuation of that particular light is really very small. Why? Because that particular light it is of the same frequency, moving at a very high speed. They are of the same frequency, moving at the very high speed, 
And for that particular case, because it is of the same frequency, it will just be having a single color. So it will depend upon the device itself. Some other lasers can be of a red color. Some other lasers can be of another different color. But they should be having the same color because they are the photons of the same wavelength. They are of the same wavelength. That is how the laser can just be produced uh, by having looked from the, the innermost behavior of an electron crossing from the ground state to an excited state, coming back to the metastable state, and whenever such kind of excitation process had been, had been created, we could just be able to see some production of many more photons as it begins from the, from the one, at one photon producing two photons, four, two photons producing four photons, four photons producing eight photons, eight goes to 16, goes to 32, goes to 64, goes to 100, and 28, etc., etc. So you'll be able to find that in such a various, in such a, in such a process, or what we call a stimulated, that particular process is really what we call stimulated emission. And really, that is how we could just be able to get many, many more photons produced within the same device, just like an optical resonator. And that particular photon, photons, whenever they all together move away, you'll be able to find that they are really very strong, very energetic, and they can be able to move with a very long distance with a very little attenuation, with a very little uh, scattering. And we shall just be able to see later even the properties of this particular, uh, of, of the laser, which can just be produced uh, in this way. Okay, so let us, uh, let us look now the requirements that are needed for the production of laser. There are three requirements which are really needed for the production of laser. First of all, we really need to have uh, requirements. First of all, requirements of production. First of all, we really need to have a, a, metastable, a, a metastable state. Within the configuration, we really need to have such kind of a metastable state whereby those electrons, whenever they go to an excited state, whenever they are jumping back to the metastable state, they could be able to produce photons. And uh, due to a stimulation of those many more electrons coming back to the, to the metastable state, then we are just going to have many more photons to be produced. We also need to have a uh, population invasion. Population inversion. Population inversion means that we need to have some many more electrons to, uh, to a high energy level than at the lower energy level. Just like those electrons which will be able to come to a metastable state should be more than the ones which are really uh, than are the ones which are really to the ground state. So that is the population inversion for the purpose of having many more electrons whenever they are excited to go up to an excited state and whenever they come back to a metastable state, they'll be able to release some more photons. And uh, the third condition, uh, it means that we should have the requirement for the production of a laser. It means that that particular laser which is just going to be produced, it should be, it should be coherent and uh, should be coherent and should be uh, monochromatic mean that it should be of the same frequency, that it should be mono, monochromatic, uh, mon monochromatic and coherent. Uh, that, particular that particular photons which are just going to be produced, they should be of the same frequency. And for that particular case, the actual, the actual stimulated, emitted light will be of the same frequency, and that is what we call a laser the light amplification of a stimulated emission of radiation which will just be uh, which will just be produced so these these are the requirements okay students let us go and look the properties of lasers
there are three properties of lasers. Uh, the first one, uh, we are saying that the laser light should be collimated. Collimated means what? Means that those particular photons which are just going to be produced, they should be really moving together. Uh, moving together, existing together, as long as they are of the same frequency and uh, uh, they are of the same frequency, the way they have just been produced, they will be like to be almost all together. And even uh, the divergence, the divergence uh, of that particular uh, of that particular light as it as it travels is really is almost nil, very 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 small, or almost nil. And that's why that light can be able to travel over a very long distance with a very small, uh, with a very small divergence. So that is collimated, and it makes the whole beam really to be very strong, very intense, very strong, moving along a very narrow path with a very little uh, scattering. That is the very first property of laser. The second one, the second property, I saying that a laser light should be monochromatic should be monochromatic monochromatic means that the photon which is the switch is going which is produced is of the same frequency is of the same frequency and now as long as we are using let's say atoms of the same uh, of the same element very specifically those particular uh, very specifically those particular photons as they are moving from an existed state to a metastable state, you'll just be able to find that they will be producing the uh, they will be producing uh, photons of the same frequency, and that is what we call a uh, monochromatic. And they should be coherent. The third property they should be coherent, meaning that those photons, because are just like wave-like, they should be in phase to each other so that they are all in phase as they are moving. The way they are being produced and the way they are moving, they should just be in phase, so they are coherent. So really, here we are talking about the frequency of the photon produced, and the way they are moving, they should just be coherent because they should just be in phase. So these are the properties of the lasers. Okay, so students, as we have already looked at the properties of the lasers, these are just a three. That first of, as I've already said, that they should be collimated and monochromatic and coherent. And you can just be able to see that these lasers, whenever they are just being produced, they are really very strong. Within a very small microscopic region, the intensity of the laser which is being produced, it is of a very high temperature. To sometimes it might go to a temperature which is really greater than the temperature of the sun which is of about 6,000 degrees of a Kelvin. So you, so you can just be able to think about that kind of a laser which is going to be produced, that it can be able to, it can be used for various purposes of even destroying very big things, very big machines, as we shall be able to see whenever we're just going to look onto the applications of lasers. Okay, now let us go and look now types of lasers. The types of lasers. So we are having four types of lasers. Uh, we are having four types of lasers. The first one is uh, the first one is what we call uh, the solid state. Laser. The solid state uh, laser. Uh, this is the first one, and uh, the second one is what we call uh, the gas laser, and the third one is what we call the liquid laser, and uh, the last one is what we call. Uh, a semiconductor, a semiconductor laser. Let's let us just start by looking the solid state laser. The solid state laser; these are just the normal lasers. 
Okay, so we just found that uh, into a solid state laser, here we are having some particular elements, yeah, what we call the dopants. And these are the elements such that whenever they are being, uh, they are being treated in the way of which it's just beyond your level, like the, like the, the cerbium, erbium, uh, and terbium, uh, you'll just be able to find that these are just few few elements that whenever they are just being treated, they could just be able to produce the laser. And uh, these are what we call the dopants. You could just be able to remember whenever we are talking about the doping process into the semiconductor. So these are the dopants which can really be used and be treated to produce a laser. And that, is, that laser is what we call the solid state laser. Whenever we go to the gas laser, to a gas laser, then you are having a gas in a container. And uh, the, 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 dis, the, discharge, the, the discharge tube, and uh, uh, the, the, that particular gas which will just be electrically discharged, will eventually just be able to produce a laser. And that laser, as long as it's produced from the gas which is, has been contained in a certain div special device, then that's what we call a gas laser. We are going to have a liquid laser. Liquid laser is a laser which is produced from the medium of a liquid. So through, 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 that, through a certain process, a treatment of that particular liquid, whenever it's being, uh, it's being activated, we could just be able to find that such a st stimulated emission could just be achieved within such a liquid medium and uh, we could be able to produce a laser as well. And that's why that's we're going to have what we call a liquid laser. And uh, the semiconductor laser. For the semiconductor laser, then here we are using the semiconductor uh, materials. Semiconductor materials at which whenever they are just being, uh, whenever they are being treated, uh, they, whenever they are just being treated, they could just be able to produce the what we call the semiconductor laser. So these are the types of lasers uh, so far we could just be able to discuss. And uh, after that, we could now just be able to go and look onto the uses of the lasers. This will be uh, our last part. We'll be able to use look the uses of lasers. Okay, students, now let us go and look onto the uses of lasers. As I've, just as I've been given you an introduction, we'll just be able to find that lasers have got so many applications in science and in technology. And that's why uh, with that new technology, really these lasers have been found to be used at different areas. It can be used in medicine, it can be used in military, it can be used in in industry, it can be used uh, in making films, it can be used in various areas. And uh, we shall just be able to look those sensitive and very important areas where these lasers can just be used. The very first part, we can just be able to see uh, that lasers can be used in medicine. In medicine. We could just be able to find that the lasers uh, can just be used, let's say, in, uh, in treatment. For example, it can the lasers can be used, let's say, can just be used to remove some tumors developed to a patient uh, without, without a patient having an operation. So that particular tumors can just be removed. And some delicate operation, like an operation of an eye, lasers can just be used. Very comfortably, a patient can be treated having such kind or such kind of uh, such kind of uh, such kind of a treatment without even having a scar, or even losing a blood, or even or even having any particular problem because it's just a laser which can just be directed to a particular position uh, or to a particular area where a tumor is supposed to be removed or being or the cells being killed or whatever and 
a patient can just be treated in this way. That is in medicines. And uh, we could be able to find that uh, lasers can as well be used in industries. In industries. As I've already said that, the lasers are really very strong. Very strong rays, very energetic in such a way that they could even be used to cut, to have a precision cut or a precision making some very tiny holes to a very strong uh, metallic ions, uh, very in a precision at which no any, other, no any other device that can just be able to make it such having such such having a very big precision cutting and that is for the industries and there are a lot of application of lasers in industries uh, just like in ro in robots or whatever but really this this will just be uh, this is not at your level where you can be able to see it but really there are so many applications but but as uh, but as the lasers itself as you can be able to see it can be used in this way and it can be able it can be used let's say even in the military it can be used in the military in the military we are having uh, we are having some uh, we, we know from the properties of the lasers having a, an ability of moving over a very long distance without ha with, with, with a very small uh, scattering or small attenuation, you will be able to find that they could just be used to guide some missiles. That's why we're having the laser-guided missiles. The missiles that whenever they are being fired, they could be guided by a laser to a target. And therefore, the, therefore, the target Actually, the target uh, aimed by such a missile will be hit perfectly correct without any problem with the help of lasers. And, uh, and this is really, and, and this is just one application in the military. There are so many applications that they can, can be used even to destroy some other, uh, some other, some other, let's say, enemy. Uh, enemy devices that are coming to you or whatever because the lasers are just as strong as I've already said that they are more energetic and very stronger and they could just be able to destroy even bigger machines or whatever. And that is for the military use. We could also be able to find that uh, the lasers can as well be used, let's say, in films, in making films. They can be used in making films. Uh, one of the advantage of a laser is to be able to create a three-dimensional figure. You can be able to create a three-dimensional figure. So it means that if you look at an object, you could be able to see in all of the three directions, the X, Y, and Z direction. So you could be able to build up a diagram which could be observed into three directions. And uh, with the help of the lasers, you could be able to make some Good films, uh, good films, just like just like those uh, film co uh, film companies that are really used to make some cartoons or whatever into a three dimensional. Like the uh, there are several companies. Okay, we could just be able to mention just like the the Walt Disney uh, and some other companies. They are really making good films, good cartoons, which could be viewed into a three dimensional. Uh, that is one of the one of the one of the advantage that the that one of the advantage for the lasers so this is actually w is what we call the hologram this is what we call the hologram that is the fourth ad uh, fourth use of the lasers we could be able to find that some other uses of the lasers uh, in a, in a printing in a printing industries lasers are used to make perfect printing lasers are used and we could just be able to see that uh, in the printing industries or in, uh, in, in just like in the photo photocopiers, in the photocopiers, yeah, they, are using, they are using some lasers. Uh, just like uh, the photocopiers, there are, uh, there are laser, laser photocopiers or laser printers or whatever. So in an, uh, in an industry of printing, the uh, lasers are just used. There are uh, so many areas where the lasers can just be used. 
there are so many areas where the lasers can just be used. Another area is uh, in optical, what we call, uh, in what we call the optical discs. Optical discs, just like uh, just like the CD, the compact disc, uh, the compact disc read-only memory, and uh, the DVD, digital versatile discs. These read-only memory. These are the discs whereby the lasers, once they are being put into DVD machine or whatever, there are uh, some laser of a particular strength which could be able to scan around the grooves of a disk and decode or take that information and relay it to an amplifier and the amplifier could be able to play back whether it's a data or whether it's a music or whatever and that is what we call uh, and that's where we could be able to see some lasers can just be used in those particular uh, devices just like the DVD player or the or the 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 DVD player or some other devices. And we could as well have some other uses of the lasers, uh, like, uh, like in, 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 in supermarkets, supermarkets or in shops. All of, all, of the all of the items which are sold there, they have got some barcodes. They have got some barcodes. And if you look at the barcodes, just like these, the barcodes which are here, if you look any particular device which is sold to any particular market, they have got some barcodes. Now, there are some sensors to a shopkeeper. Once he just moves across the barcode, that particular barcode could be relayed, that particular barcode could be relayed to, I mean, could just be relayed to, a, a, with the help of the laser, could just be able to pick the, the decoded barcode to an information that is stored to a computer. And the computer can be able to relay back this information to a server, and the server could be able to, to identify such kind of an item and even the price. So a shopkeeper has, has a shopkeeper needs, he, 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 he or she doesn't need to remember the prices of all of the items which are kept there in the shop. So if you buy any particular, so many items, the shopkeeper will just be able to identify the barcodes, use the scanner which uses a laser. He or she could just be able to, uh, to, 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 to move around the barcode and uh, that particular information could be related to a computer, to a server, and then finally the total amount of the price you are supposed to pay could just be relayed back into a computer. So the barcodes, uh, the barcodes that uh, are just very helpful, let's say, uh, to fasten or to speed up this, uh, to, to speed up uh, or to help those the shopkeepers whenever uh, the customers are coming there to buy some items. There are various areas where we could just be able to see uh, lasers are being used. We could be able to have some other uses, like what we call the photonics, whereby it's a combination of the it's the combination of the optic fiber, and uh, the optic fiber sometimes can just be used uh, along with the lasers to transfer a message from one position to another. Now, the technology of a combination where the, uh, whereby the, the optic fiber are used in a combination with the lasers, and then, then this is what we call the photonics, where we are going to have a combination uh, of such kind of a technology of using the, the optic fibers, uh, with, uh, with the lasers to transfer for an information from one part to another. And that's what we call the photonics. So there are uh, various areas whereby, uh, various areas whereby the lasers can just be used. Okay? We are having, we are having these uses of the lasers. Uh, another use of the laser, we could be able to find that the lasers can be used in surveying. In surveying, those uh, those who are surveyors, whenever they just want to, to 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 look, let's say to determine, let's say an area of a particular location, really they are just putting some beacons or some posts at some particular corners. 
locate to the location of which they need just to determine the area and uh, uh, now the, 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 the there is a particular machine throw th that which is really which is really a surveyor has just to trigger a laser be able to communicate to th to some other posts if that is the post a and that is post b and the one is here now a device is going to have can be able to communicate with a post which is kept there at point a with a and can be able to communicate with the post which is kept at point b and finally and finally this man here a surveyor could be able to know the actual area uh, the actual area which is uh, which is really a triangle it's not necessary to be a triangle sometimes it could just be a rectangle or a triangle yes, this is a triangle it can just sometimes be of a four angle or some more so as long as there are some posts located at that particular position using the you i mean using that particular surveying device uh, producing some lasers the lasers could be able to communicate with that particular post and finally an area an intended area uh, located located with that particular post will just be determined so straight there are several applications but these are just a few for you to understand uh, how and where the lasers can just be used in our daily life okay students now let's go and uh, look for the questions i've just prepared for you my the first question goes like this briefly explain how does laser light differ from the normal light briefly explain how does the laser light differ from the normal light so this is just a, a simple a very short question and it's simple uh, we really need to see the difference we need to see the difference between a laser light uh, and a normal light so you could just be able to answer this question the way you'd like but really you need to show the difference between the normal light and the laser light so if i could be able to to take here about a laser light uh, uh, and here to be the normal light first of all is what i've already said previously that the laser light the laser light it is a light having the same frequency because as i've already said it, it's being produced by uh, by stimulated emission of electrons and those electrons they are produced to be of the same frequency so the laser light it is of the same frequency same frequency but for the normal light the normal light it is a mixture of different colors each color have got its own frequency and wavelength okay so for the normal light here uh, the normal light have uh, it is a combination of various colors of different frequency so here we could be able to say here it is a combination it's a combination uh, of various uh, colors various colors uh, of different of different frequencies of different frequencies so this is for the normal light and and if we are having a light to be of the same frequency it should be unique it means that it should be of the same color so here it should be the laser light should be having uh, the same color while the normal light this is a white light the normal light is a white light okay and that's why if and that's why if you take care to be your prism and you inject a normal light there the light will just be able to undergo some uh, the red color uh, to that particular part uh, the orange yellow green uh, indigo uh, sorry blue indigo 
and uh, the violet goes to the bottom part. So you can be able to see that these colors, once they are being combined together, they bring about the white light, which is the normal light. But if, if I could be using a laser light, then there is no such kind of, there is no such kind of formation of these colors. If it could be, a, if it could be a laser light coming this way, you will just be having the laser light just, be just a single light. Uh, if, it is, if it is a red, you will ha be having a red there. Because a red color, it is a, 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 a light of, a, of the same frequency, of the same wavelength, and there is no way we can be able to have some dispersion of a single colored light, just like a laser. And uh, we are having the laser light to be, uh, the laser light also it is in phase. It is in phase. Mm. But for the normal light, normal light sometimes is not in phase. Eh? For the normal light sometimes it is not in phase. Eh? It can be mixed. It sometimes can be in phase, sometimes it cannot be in phase. Is not in phase. Mm. And we are having some more properties for the laser light. And the laser light, we just found that it is uh, collimated. That is the production of the f the production of the photons which are just going to be produced. They are all together, moving together in a phase, very strong, energetic, in the same straight line over a very long distance. And uh, here, uh, it's not col col not collimated. Uh, there are so many differences. There are so many differences as you are comparing the laser light and the normal light. We could be able to talk about even the distance. Uh, there is a very big attenuation for the normal light that the light could just be able to travel a very short distance and after that you won't be able to see anything. But for the laser light it can be able to travel a very long distance and that's why it can be even, be even used let's say for the communication of some satellites because it can be able to travel a, over a very long distance with a little attenuation. And here we can be talking about attenuation, uh, have literal, have literal attenuation, meaning that spreading over, uh, but this have large. Large attenuation. Mm. These are just few differences between the normal light and uh, the laser light. That is for the question number one. Let's go to question number two. The question number two. How is it possible to create a laser beam strong enough to use as a weapon to destroy heavy machine? Okay. So let's go, let's look at our question number two. That is, the question number two says that, uh, how is it possible to create a laser beam strong enough to use as a weapon to destroy heavy machine? Here is just a normal explanation. As we've already said previously, that the laser light, the stimulated emission, where we could be able to produce a laser light, could just be done in a way that, if such kind of, st of stimulated emission can really go on for some several time, as I've already said that we could be able to produce a laser light which could be of very intense, very strong, even to a temperature which could go even beyond the temperature of the sun, about 6,000 degrees over centigrade. Now just, just imagine we are having a laser of that particular temperature. What does it mean? It means that, what, it means that a laser by itself can even be able to can even be able to drill a very big metallic material or can even be able to kill something or to destroy something and that's why in our today's technology even in the military those lasers can as well be used let's say to destroy some heavy machines or can be used to destroy an enemy machine 
so it can be used as a weapon as well. So that's how we could say that it is very possible to create a laser beam to be stronger enough as a weapon which could just be able to destroy some heavy machine. Okay, that is, uh, that's our question number two. So students, uh, let me, I, I, I believe there are a lot of questions which we could just be able to do it. But I'm taking to you one question for you as a homework. Uh, and this question says, explain the difference between surgical laser and communication laser. Surgical laser and communication laser. Briefly, I could be able to say to you, you should have to know about the surgical laser are those lasers which are used in hospitals for operation or for some other medical, medical use. Communication laser are those lasers which are used for communication purposes. It can be either satellite communication or from one post to another as for the surveyors, as I've already said, to my last application there of laser. That is for communication purposes. And uh, so you need now just to see the difference and uh, look for those two, look for those basic differences and just be able to write them. And that will just be the answer and take this as the homework for you. Okay, students, uh, I do hope that whatever we have just done here, you are now be able to know what is laser, how it can be produced, how, what are the types of the lasers, the way they could be produced and evenly how, where the lasers can just be used in our daily life. And I do hope you have enjoyed the lesson and uh, you could just be able to answer any particular question with regard to laser. Thank you students and see you next time.